All right, we're here on a sunny New Hampshire morning with the uh, beautiful sound of a turbo diesel tractor in the background. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how to install an O2 sensor simulator. So what I've done is I've pulled the uh, O2 sensor simulator lines from a 2003 WRX up into the engine compartment. And there's four wires here. There's two black wires correspond to the heater on the sensor and then there's a blue signal and a white ground reference wire um, and I've got them capped off you want to cap these things off so that when you're testing stuff out you don't make any shorts or uh, have any problems with that first step is to uh, grab a multimeter and then take the heater lines what you want to do is you want to uh, find out which one of them is supplying the 12 volt power. So, in this particular car, it's not the same in every car, but in this car, the heater is supplied with 12 volts on one of the lines, and the other line is drained through pulse width modulation um, in a transistor, so basically it's switched on and off to ground on the other line by the ECU. So what I want to do is I want to figure out which one of these is 12 volts and you use your multimeter to do that. You touch the leads, black to ground, red to each of the black cables, and then wrap a piece of tape around the one that's 12 volts. So I'll turn the car on now so that you guys can see that. one's a 12 volt because we tested it with the multimeter. Uh, there's a piece of tape around this guy just so that we know which one it is. We're going to take this uh, wiring harness and we're going to disconnect it from here so we can take it in the garage and uh, connect it all up. So I'm going to disconnect this guy and then we'll take it into the garage and then wire it up to the O2 sim simulator and then we'll go from there, bring it back, put it in the car and uh, then we'll be done. Okay, we're back in the garage now. We've got our uh, connector squid here with the two heater wires. The one that we marked is 12 volts, so we still know which one that is. Um, and then there's a signal, the blue, and then the ground reference white. So we're going to start with the, uh, the 12 volt guy here. And we'll take off the cap. And I've got these uh, little wishbones that I made basically three pieces of wire, a piece of shrink wrap and soldered together in the middle and this will allow us to break out the 12 volt connection to power the simulator and to feed to the heater so the 12 volt source can uh, double for both so you don't have to run a line to your accessory or to your battery this makes it more convenient um, so that it's a one-shot installation so I'll open the simulator they come in this velvet bag And here it is. Okay, so there's a number of things written on the simulator, which is kind of hard to see on the camera. But you'll see there's a 12 volt signal, reference, ground, and heater. There's two heater lines right here. So what you've got to do is you've got to wire the 12 volt into the 12 volt and then also into the heater. And that's what the wishbone is for so that you can power both the heater and the simulator off of the same power source without having to run that separate line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a piece of shrink wrap and I'm going to connect the wishbone to the 12 volt supply. So you put your piece of shrink wrap over the wire first and then you go through and you solder and connect those two. All right. Now we've got our dog bone put on, the shrink wraps on there. I used a heat gun to shrink that. And um, we're going to see here <coughs> the hookup for the actual O2 simulator now. So what I'll do is I'm going to take these guys off. Um, and since they're braided wire, I like to do what's called tinning the wire. Um, just basically taking the soldering iron, which I've got running over here 
and then wicking some solder into these so that they can be easily manipulated into the, uh, the screw terminals. And they're more solid, so they don't fray or have any problems with, you know, uh, coming apart in the connection. It just makes the whole process more robust to have these guys tinned so that they don't loosen up on the ends over time or vibration. Alright, now that these guys are tinned up, I went ahead and put them into the screw terminal. And I like these screw terminals a lot because, you know, they're a lot better than the wing nuts. You could use those, the wing nuts, but they have vibration problems and can come loose over time and they have uh, a lot of bending problems with the, uh, the wire. But I've taken the, uh, the wishbone that we made and I put it into the plus 12 volt, which is on this side, and then the HTR1, which is on the other side. Um, and the ground, which is the other black wire for the heater, the heater ground, um, goes into HTR2. So that's the other black wire that comes for the heater, goes into HTR2. Ground, we're going to connect to the vehicle chassis. So once we're back out there, um, I'll take a piece of hookup wire between ground um, and the vehicle's frame. And reference on this particular car is the white wire. Signal is the blue wire, so SIG is the blue wire, and REF is the white wire, and our 12 volts connected to the wishbone. Now we're going to go back out to the car and hook this up. Uh, we'll get our hookup wire for the, the ground cable, and then we'll start it up and see it work. So now we're back out to the car. We got this guy done. Everything's wired up. We've got the ground cable that goes to the chassis coming out of the GND ground pin. And in this car, there's a convenient place to hook it up. Right here, there's a bolt to the frame, so we can just use that guy. So we'll loosen it up. Tighten it in there. Great. Okay, so all hooked up now. We're ready to plug her back into the, uh, the socket here. So there it is. All done. Now what we need to do is just uh, anchor it down somehow. And the method that I choose to anchor it down with is the uh, putty epoxy. And it comes in these sticks. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever you get hardware. To uh, stand off the back of the electronics with this putty epoxy so that none of the signal leads uh, contact on the metal because you don't want that that'll short out the heater especially so basically uh, what you got to do is you got to ball some of this up find a good spot you know so you can stand it off and have it set there and uh, it's pretty straightforward then you get it so that it's uh, insulated from the substrate and this epoxy putty is great at gripping it and sticking it somewhere so that it doesn't move either. Um, so you get both the structural and the electrical standoff that you need. So I'll mix this guy up. Alright. What I'll do is I'll just uh, go ahead and put some on the back here. Usually I split it into two pieces and I'll put some near each of the heater, heater wire terminals and then some over the uh, signal contact terminals. So you've got that going on. And find a nice looking spot for it right here. I'll put it diagonally like that. I cleaned this area off beforehand too so that it can stick better. So there you go and play with that so it's aesthetically how you want it. Might look good too, huh? All right, and then what you want to do is tuck those wires down so that they're out of the way. And you're done. You've got it in. It's electrically insulated from the car. You've got your wires hooked up. And this thing's going to look like a UFO at night with these white LEDs on it. Try to get a picture of it.